I'm going to start to today. We've done shopping and eating and shopping. And that's about it. Welcome to another episode of Tropey Stupid Vlog. Afternoon. So I'm going back to the retail park for the uh, second time today and the fourth time in 24 hours. I'm not very good at shopping. We were over there this morning to get a few ingredients for the chilli that we're making and to... I bought some jeans, Crystal returned some clothes. Then we went to see, as you saw, Crystal's mum and the girls in Kew Village. They'd just come out of the gardens. And we've been back home doing a bit of tidying and sorting and watching, you know, um, property-based programmes on a Channel 4 or one of its subsidiaries. So that's pretty much it, but now I've realised I don't actually have any fruit, so I'm going back to M&S again. Good afternoon from inside of Kew, where it's very sunny and a little bit windy. Mostly sunny though. We're making the most of the fact that it was very, very wet this morning and nobody's come into the gardens. So, um, well I say nobody, it's much more empty than you'd imagine on a bank holiday. So it's very nice. And when the sun comes out, it's actually very hot. Um, where has the glass house gone? Where, where, what have they done with it? That is very strange. We're on the 65 bus yeah. going to Richmond Park. There's a huge queue outside of Kew Gardens today, but not here at Lion Gate, where there is no one. We're in the Heather Garden part of Isabella Plantation, just coming into the azaleas and rhododendrons and what have you up there. Rhododendron-tastic and azalea-tastic at this time of year. So Isabella Plantation is at the southern end of Richmond Park. And uh, like the rest of Richmond Park, it's free. So you can come and visit whenever you like if you're in the area. Obviously if the weather's this good and it's bank holiday, it's quite busy. This is the still pond at the end of the river. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to head away from these aliens for a bit. Good morning, it's obviously Mad Hair Tuesday. Um, it's the first day of the week, despite the fact it's Tuesday, due to the joys of bank holidays. So this week, uh, today, it's reasonably straightforward, but this week's a bit man mental, so I've got... Um, I'm conducting three board reappointment interviews this evening. Then tomorrow and Thursday, I'm up in Camden at USP. Uh, Thursday and Friday night, however, I'm at the Grosvenor House Hotel doing some stuff for Crowdscreen. And Saturday, I have a Co-op Homes special general meeting most of the day. And then Monday evening, I am going to be giving a talk to RHP about resident involvement as part of a group of people. Um, and I might be at USP that day as well, but I'm hoping not. So, it's pretty, you know, relaxed, manic, and I'm making myself some kimchi fried rice to celebrate uh, the wonder that is Veggie Day. So, yeah, I will keep you updated, but I'm going to be seriously exhausted by the end of this week. Luckily, in a week's time, a week today, we will be in Valencia. So that is awesome. Oh, and before then, obviously, there's a little matter of a general election happening on Thursday. So... I'm very glad to be leaving the country shortly thereafter. Hi. So, today is one of my days off, uh, except for this uh, board interview process this evening. And so I've used the day filling in my tax return. Ooh. It's literally only four months since I did the last one. Uh, but I figured we're in the new tax year. We're a month into it. I've got all my accounts and what have you in order. Let's do it. Otherwise, it'll be that usual hoo-ha we get to January. And I'll think, oh, God, I haven't done my tax return. So I've done it, and it's very straightforward, and I owe 
Her Majesty's government only a few hundred pounds. So I'll be paying them that. Um, probably not before I know who Her Majesty's government is made up of. Not that that will change whether I pay it or not. Just that that gives you some time scale. It won't happen this week. Um, so there we go. I'm sure you're fascinated to know this. Do your tax return if you have to. I thought this is if you're uh, employed by somebody else, you don't have to. But if you are self-employed and you have the information, do it now. I really recommend it. Once you get in, it's near Christmas, the thought of having to do it and then having to find the money to pay it. Oh, don't. Don't put it off. Do it in summer whilst you're still in a good mood. Trust me. So I'm just coming back from Teddington. I've just done board member reappointment interviews. And I've said this before, and most people don't believe this, but I'd much rather be interviewed than interview someone else. Um, don't know why, just that's how I'm wired. But anyway, it's done now. Um, now we enter the crazy week properly with two days, two evenings, one Saturday and another Monday evening of work to do. <laughs> let's see if I look this fresh-faced. I don't look, do I? I was going to say, let's see if I look this good in a week. <laughs> if I still look this bad in a week, things are pretty bad. So from one sofa to another. I'm at USP um, in the uh, studio. This is the where we record things. And I've um, worn the wrong jumper because I now match the sofa. <laughs> so this is where I am today, working on the last of this series of Magic of the Musicals, which is obviously on magic. Um where they've just sacked the programme director that we reported to. So that was fun. Um, so that is mostly mostly what I'm doing today. Then I've got to go back via... I've got to go home via um, uh, the brewery in Islington, which is a really, really indirect route home, just so I can pick up some things for Neil, because tomorrow, as I mentioned, I'm doing some crowd screen things at Grosvenor House. Um, picked up my new trainers in Camden, so that's good. So that's another thing ticked off my list, but there's still quite a lot of things to do before I can go on holiday and uh why does this always happen why does everything sort of bunch towards the holiday um i think i think it's my fault if i'm honest for just saying yes too much but uh you know it's all money isn't it that's what it comes down to i've got to make money so i can spend it all on holiday <laughs> so here's something i didn't know happened in this building a man comes around with brownies i mean no they're not free you have to buy them but he comes around with like a huge tub of brownies with like 21 different flavours. And you can buy a brownie. That's pretty good. Obviously, I bought one. I've got a maple pecan brownie. I'll let you know how it goes on pawn completion. I'm having to put the programme on hold whilst I eat my brownie. Brownie update. It was awesome. End of statement. Hello from the comfy sofa. So it's the general election today. Um... I've said pretty much all I'm going to say about, you know, why you should be involved in democracy. Um, I just want to leave you with a thought. Um, what I have an issue with is perception of left and right, very broadly. For example, if um, if you are right of centre and you are scathing about the left, you tend to probably say sort of slightly clueless um you know, money spending, but, you know, financially illiterate. That's that's probably that's probably the worst thing you'll hear the right say about the left. Um, well, it's not very nice, and in some cases not very accurate, but, um, it's, but it's broadly harmless. Um, what I dislike is the other way around. Um, if, when you hear people on the left talking about the right wing in scathing terms, they will use words like evil and poor hating and um there's just this this insinuation of malice which i simply don't buy um and i think it's a bit out of order frankly um i wouldn't describe myself as left or right of center i'm very much in the middle ground but i really dislike the way that um the right is perceived to be inherently evil whereas the left is just a, a, you know gets away with just a bit sort of happy-go-lucky clueless and I just I think that's misbalanced uh, if you are left-wing if you dislike a conservative-led government what have you you're perfectly entitled to believe that um, please keep your criticisms um, to policy and accuracy and um, if you genuinely believe 
that they actually hate people, then I think you are a little bit crazy, frankly. I think you might have issues. So if you're watching this next week, from my perspective, and there still appears to be no government, now that's not technically correct, and here's why. Uh, the outgoing government doesn't have to resign until they're sure that the Prime Minister will lose a no-confidence vote, or actually loses it. Up to that point, he has the right to try and form a government. So, in reality, that means that we have the same government until such time as the Prime Minister resigns and a new coalition attempts to form and they win a vote on a Queen's speech. So, um, yeah, if the Prime Minister can't get his Queen's speech through, then the Queen would ask the somebody else to try and form one. And that's basically how it works. So we never have no government. We just have the previous one until they resign. So here we are, UK Pension Awards 2015, moderating some crowd screens, which have been up um, most of the dinner. And uh, they just come down, so you can't see them because they're about to start actually giving out awards. Anyway, this is what my evening involves. There's not much more to see. Well, there you go. That was a terrible election. And I don't actually mean in terms of, you know, who won what. It was a terrible election in many ways because the pollsters were all horribly wrong, thus wasting an enormous amount of time and money. Um, the two largest parties, again, got about two thirds of the votes, but will end up getting about 80% of the seats. Um, we have a party that got about 4% of the votes, will end up with about... 10%, no, more than that, I think. Yeah, about 10% of the seats, slightly more, slightly less than 10% of the seats. Um, we've got parties that get far uh, more votes uh, and far less seats. The entire electoral process is farcical. Um, but there's some, you know, rays of sunshine um, in there. Uh, George Galloway lost his seat. He's a proper idiot. Um, it looks like, and I hope that I don't uh, live to regret saying this, um, Nigel Farage has not won his seat, um, and UKIP have lost one of their MPs. So, but it's still terrible. It's, it's terrible. In fact, the only person who correctly called this election wasn't the exit polls, because, I mean, by that point, they actually know, knew how people had voted and they asked them, um, was my mum, who called this election one week ago and said, the Conservatives are going to win. And I laughed it off and said, no chance. Minority government at best. <laughs> Next time you want to know an election result, just ask my mum. So I did warn you what would happen if you don't vote. The election would be decided by older people. And it was again. Um, the exception might be Scotland. But across England and Wales, again, it was over 50s turned out and voted. And they're the people who will benefit from the policies you'll now see. And I only hope that when we get to the point where we have an EU referendum in the next few years, that you get off your ass and you realise the value of turning up and voting. Because otherwise the world changes and it's those who turn up who make the decisions. Anyway, enough depressing politics. I'm going to do the only sensible thing to do when you have a Conservative government. That's leave the country. <laughs> I'm going on holiday. Uh, to Spain while well, I still can, uh, whilst free movement of people is still a thing. Um, on Tuesday, that is. So this is pretty much the end of the week. I have so far packed one hat, um, so far uneaten by Paddy Ashdown, and um, that is all that I've done. So I have a couple of days in which to get my shit together. So that will be starting immediately in the next vlog. So here we are back at Grosvenor House. This time it's for the 80th anniversary of Millfield School. This is what's up on the big screens here, which I'm controlling from the little screen here. And everybody is milling around, looking um, very well to do. I think that's what we would like to be putting it. And yeah, so that's what I'm here doing tonight. And uh, this is where um, this is where I'm going to end the week. Which is slightly, it's been a slightly surreal week, if I'm honest. Uh, everyone's getting very excited. Anyway, I'm going to go back and do my job. 
Good evening. It has been a, a slow day's worth of packing here and uh, I've been in Teddington for a shareholders catch-up meeting and yeah it's been nice to have a day where there hasn't been too much work and tomorrow there's no work at all and we might go to the cinema but right now we're just going to go for a walk around the block. Um, this vlog will wrap up formally on Monday and then the next one will be entirely Spanish. There'll be two. I'm going to do a complete Valencia one and then a complete Barcelona one. I think that's how I'm going to do it. It'll be like four days each. So that's what you have to look forward to. Oh, I might do them daily. I'll come back to you on that in the next 48 hours. <laughs> um, right now I'm going for a walk. Good old Richmond in the sunshine. It's like being on holiday. Just 48 hours early because, you know, ice creams and sunshine. Just been to the cinema and we've just been there to Daniele's ice cream store. There's actually two ice cream shops next to each other, both owned by the same company, and they both have queues outside. It's that crazy for ice cream today. Hello from sunny Camden. I'm just on my way now from USP down to all the way across London to Teddington. Feels like I've done this a little too much. Um, for the last RHP commitment I have before we go on holiday tomorrow morning at five o'clock. Um, in 12 hours. We go on holiday in 12 hours. Oh, this is too soon. <laughs> and we're in Teddington. Actually, we're somewhere in Strawberry Hill. I thought I'd take a different route. Um, and so far, I've just walked down a really long alley, so that's a bit disappointing. Anyway, um, such a beautiful day. I just wish I didn't have to use my brain anymore before I got on a plane. Nonetheless, we're nearly there. Oh, check out the excellent wisteria. <laughs> right, we shall meet once more and then it shall be the end. Right, I'm back, I'm going to bed. That, as always, was a very interesting and informed discussion, um, and I will think more upon that when I return for my holiday, because right now I need to turn my brain off, I need to relax, and I need to go and enjoy the sunshine. I hope you will join me for that, and I hope you will subscribe if you are so inclined, and hopefully I will see you in Spain.